So I've been talking about vCPU for some time now. Let's see what vCPU is. First of all, you all know what CPU is. It's a central processing unit. vCPU is virtual CPU or virtual central processing unit. So how does it differ from CPU? To tell you that, I'll have to give you a little bit of introduction on how CPU works. Let's take a look. So the technical definition of vCPU is each vCPU is a hyperthread of an Intel Xeon core except for T2 and M3 dot medium instances. This is an official definition given by AWS and it is there in their documentation also. So if you see here, uh, there's one more jargon has been introduced, which is hyperthread. What is that? So I hope you know what CPU works. If not, let me let me tell you how it works right away. So this is a CPU. CPU is a central processing unit. And CPU is not the one which does your work, which executes your program. It's the processors or the cores. So the CPU contains something called socket. And the processors or cores are housed on the sockets. So when we say quad core processors, that means we have four cores or processors on a single socket. When we say dual core processor, that means we have two processors on a single socket. So typically what happens is, suppose you have only one CPU in a computer, and one CPU at any point in time can execute only one program. That means, suppose you have multiple programs running in your computer, but actually what is happening is, at any point in time, your CPU is executing only one program. Even though we might not feel it, for, for humans, it feels like multiple programs are getting executed at the same time, because, because if you do all tab, we see all these programs running. But at any point in time, CPU is executing only one. And that point in time is very less for CPUs, it's in nanoseconds. So we cannot feel that. So if you have four CPUs or four processors, at any point in time, you'd be having four programs running at the same time. So it changed when Intel launched their first generation CPU, Nehalem. So what they did was they changed it and they made CPUs in such a way that each CPU can execute two programs at a time. And then each execution of that program is called a thread. So if you have say four processors, then you could have eight programs running at the same time or eight threads. So these threads are called vCPUs. So if you have say four co cores or four processors, then you, you can run eight programs at the same time. That's what threads are. So there are a lot more details about threads, which I don't want to discuss because as an AWS solutions architect or sysops, you don't need to know these things. But yes, if an application team or a database team asks you that they need four processors or say eight cores, you should know how many vCPUs to provision, which instance type to choose. Now there's one more catch here. If the number of vCPUs are odd, then processors equals to number of vCPUs. If the number of vCPUs are even, the number of processors equals to number of vCPUs divided by two. Let me show, show you that with an example. So if you see here, this t2.nano, t2.micro, t2.small and t2small uh, has one vCPU. So here, one CPU, vCPU is actually equal to one core without multi-threading. But here, all the other instance types have even number vCPUs. That means it's a single processor with two threads. So here, for t2.x large, it's two processors with two threads each. That means four, four threads. Similarly, for say for example, in 4.4x large, there are 16 vCPUs, but actually there are eight cores, each having two threads or multi-threading is enabled for each of the cores. But m3.medium again has odd number of vCPUs. So here, one vCPU is equal to one processor without multi-threading. So that, that's all about vCPU. Uh, to give you, a, give you a little bit more insight, suppose I ask you to create an EC2 instance with four processors, what would you choose? It can be any, it can be general purpose, it can be compute optimized, it can be storage optimized. So if I ask you for four processors, 
you choose an instance type with eight vCPUs. So it's four processors with multi-threading enabled. So configure instance details is the next screen. We'll skip this one as of now because it contains network, subnet and other stuff. So we'll be discussing this in much detail during our VPC session. Next go to the next screen which is add storage. Now if you see here in add storage we have some we have volume type, some device, snapshot, size etc etc. The volume type here it says root. So this is a root device. What is a root device? Root device is something which contains your operating system and all the other installed softwares. For example, if, if you have a Windows machine, you install your operating system in your C drive. And whenever you try to install a new program, that program is installed in a folder named program files, which is also in C drive. So in, in this case, for the Windows machine, C drive is the root device volume. So root device volume contains the image using which the instance is booted. It contains the operating system and all the softwares which you install in that particular instance thereafter. Let's go for a demo now. We'll complete the lab which you have started. Also I'll show you a lot of other stuff after the instance is launched. So this is the root device volume which we have, we have already seen. Then next you can go to add tags. Tagging is similar to tagging. You are giving this EC2 instance a name. And then configure security groups. Just keep it as is. You can create a new security group. Give it some name. I have given it as AWS Foundation Demo. And remember this thing. In type, mention all traffic. And in source, mention anywhere. As of now. So we'll see what these things are later on review and launch and then launch. Now it is asking for me something called a key pair. So what is a key pair? So there are three options. You can choose an existing key pair. You can create a new key pair and you can pr proceed without a key pair. So this is something which is done for security. But as we need to log into that EC2 instance, we'll create a new key pair and name it AWS-Foundation-Key-Pair and we'll download the key pair. So see the key pair is being downloaded as PIM encoded file. We'll come back to this later on. Before that, let me tell you what a key pair is. Suppose there's a bank. The name of the bank is AWS Bank and it also gives you locker service. So I hope you know how a bank locker works. Every locker contains two keyholes and a locker can be opened only if you use both the keys for the two keyholes. So here we have three lockers, locker number one, locker number two, locker number three. So it has two keyholes, locker number one has green and red, locker number two has green and blue, locker number three has green and pink keyholes. So all these lockers are different. The key to put in this green hole contains with the bank. So the bank has this key and the other portion of the key is given to the customers. So there are three customers, one red customer, one blue customer and one pink customer. Red customer is given the red key, pink and blue customer is given the blue key and the pink customer is given the pink key. Now this locker, this belongs to this red customer and this locker can only be opened when the bank puts the green key and the customer puts the red key together. Similarly, this locker can only be opened when the bank puts the green key and the customer puts the blue key together. Similarly with this one. So this key, the key which is there with the, with the customers are called private keys. And the key which is there with the bank is called the public key. And both of them combined are called key pairs. So there are three key pairs here. One is red key pair and one is blue key pair and the third one is pink key pair. But for all the key pairs, the public key is same, the private keys differ. Now why it is called a public key? Because it is there with the bank and the same key works with all the lockers. But the private keys are private to each customer. So each customer gets a different key. Now the key pair in EC2 instances also work the same way. Think of the lockers as EC2 instances. So when I downloaded the key pairs, actually I downloaded the private key and the public key 
will be embedded to the EC2 instance during its launch. So when I, if I want to log into this EC2 instance, I'll have to provide the private key so that it can be matched with the public key and then I can log into the EC2 instance. Now there's a little bit more twist. Now what, what we can do is we can launch multiple EC2 instances with the same key pair. As this is not a bank, we'll be launching thousands of thousands of EC2 instance in our corporate environment or our enterprise environment. So we cannot have multiple key pairs, different key pairs for all those EC2 instances. So we can use the same key pair to launch multiple instances like this. If you see here, I'm using the same key pair, the red key pair to launch multiple EC2 instances. And if I have to log into all the EC2 instances, I can use the same private key. So I've already downloaded the private key. Uh, the name of the key pair is aws-foundation-key-pair. It has been downloaded and is there in my download folder. So this is the key. Now I can use this key to log into my EC2 instance. So first, let me go ahead and launch the EC2 instance. So the instance is being launched and click on view instances. Then you can come here and see that this is the instance which you are launching now, AWS Foundation Demo. The status is pending. The moment the instance is up and running, the status would change to running. So the EC2 instance has been launched. Let me log into this particular instance. So there are a lot of details here. We'll go through each of them one by one. First, let me show you that I can log into this EC2 instance. There is a public IP address. I can use this IP address to log into the EC2 instance. So this is the command which can be used to log into a particular instance from any of the Linux machines. So I'll show you how to do it in Windows machine also. So now I'm inside of my EC2 instance. If you see at the IP address it is showing as 132, 172.31.85.28. That's what it is showing here. So let me go through this, all these parameters or all these details one by one. Okay, so what is an instance ID? Instance ID is a unique identifier for this particular instance in your account. So in this account, this instance ID is a unique identifier for this instance. Then you have instance state, which is running. Of course, it is running. Then instance type, the type of the instance which we had chosen while launching the instance. AZ is something which we did not choose. We'll come back to this later on. Then the AMI ID. This was the AMI which we had chosen during launch. The name of the key pair, we used AWS Foundation key pair. Then it asks for root device type, root device name. So the name of the root device is slash dev slash xvda. We'll come back to this later on. And you have these four important information. The first one is public DNS. What is public DNS? Public DNS is similar to domain name. What is a domain name? Suppose you have a web server, for example, Google. If you want to access that web server, you will paste google.com in your address bar. So google.com is the domain name or DNS name for Google's web server. For example, amazon.com is the DNS name for Amazon retails web server so that is public dns and this is the ip address so you can either so whenever you type this dns name in address bar it should resolve to this ip address as of now there are we are we have not hosted any web server we'll do it shortly and we'll see how this dns name can be used so whenever you type this dns name this that this should be resolved to this ip address i know this dns name is ugly but this can be changed using dot 53 then we have private DNS. Private DNS is within intranet. This is the DNS name or the domain name if you are using an internal network. So private IP is again within internet, within intranet, sorry. We'll discuss this in VPC. Then you have VPC ID, subnet ID, network interfaces. So we'll keep that for later discussion. So that's all about EC2. We have launched an EC2. We have seen what things are there in that EC2 instance. What I'll do right now is I'll create a very basic web page and I'll, and I'll use this DNS name to access that web page. Let me do that. Now what I'm doing is I'm installing Apache. And I'm starting this Apache service. Now I'll be creating a very basic web page. 
the web page has been created let's see whether it works or not and it should show us an orange page with the following dialogue like welcome to EC2 demo AWS foundation in an orange background I'll use this DNS name and if I paste this DNS name it should give me that orange background and it is showing welcome to EC2 demo AWS foundation if I use the IP address I should be able to get the same page exactly the same page now if I do an NS lookup on this particular DNS name it should resolve to this IP address let's see whether whether that works or not we're getting 54.227.116.102 that's uh, what the IP address of this EC2 instance is there's a very basic demo now let's go ahead and see what is there inside of that EC2 instance what information can we gather from the EC2 instance within.